My name is Frank Wan. I'm a 24-year-old Tichungu Lakota, born and raised on the Rosewood Reservation in South Dakota. Museums tend to um, perpetuate that stereotype that we're a dead culture of the past and they're never going to see us how we are today. Contemporary people living, breathing, dressing like everyone else, rapping, um, painting, you know. And when I come here to like the Field Museum and I see our culture put on blast like we're a people of the past, it makes sense, you know. A term, symbolic annihilation. If you portray a people who are underrepresented in the media as a dead culture, a culture of the past, to a lot of society they're not going to exist. They're going to be extinct. We are a people with a past, not a people of the past. Um, I commend the field on le um, letting Bunky come in and do his exhibit. You know, that's a progressive step forward, a small step. Um, but I, and I heard from other natives in, in Chicago that they've, they feel the same way about the field museum. The things that are most sacred to us are just ripped and put on display like this. And I can see how people will think it's okay to appropriate those images when personally I, I feel offended by it. As, as a Lakota person. So yeah, I was born and raised on the Rosewood Reservation in South Dakota, um, raised by my mother and my aunties. And I, I never really lived off the reservation until I graduated high school. And then I went to Creighton University in Omaha to study pre-med. I thought I wanted to be a doctor. I knew I wanted to help my people. I just didn't realize that I could do that with my passion, which was music. I'm a hip-hop artist, producer, and performer. I really tried to create something unique in that I blend a lot of traditional sounds, elements, philosophies, textures with a more familiar contemporary music form, which is hip-hop. But hip-hop was born out of oppression with limited resources, which is why I think myself and a lot of Native youth gravitate towards hip-hop. I remember I was in sixth grade, I was just, I was the lost kid. You know, I hated my dad. I was growing up in a single parent household. I was uh, walking one evening with my mother uh, on a gravel road near our community. And I seen the sun reflect off of something in the corner of the road and it caught my eye. And so I walked over and it was a CD. I picked it up, it was completely scratched up. I flipped the CD over to see what it was and it was completely white face with nothing but a backwards E on it. I was like, what the hell is this? So I took it home. I found a CD player. I, I didn't own any CDs at that point. I didn't even own a CD player. I put the CD in and it worked. It played. I didn't think it would. And it was Eminem's Marshall Mathers LP. It's like he was telling my story. He was speaking on a lot of similar things. And once I started making music, I just never stopped. So for kids back home to see someone who looks like them, someone who comes from those communities, born and raised in the same place as they are, to follow their passion, um, achieve some goals and you know go after their dream and actually see it happen. Without education I would not be where I am today. I mean it opened up so many opportunities. My scholarship in college allowed me to to live in cities outside of the reservation, um, come to Chicago which expanded my music career, which expanded my artistic vision. So I would say if you have the opportunity to pursue higher education do it. I know it's scary, I know it's hard, but it, it's worth it. I know there's power to my story and that's why I share it with other native communities and why I'm not afraid to do those things.